What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're starting the new series, Kayaking for Beginners. First and foremost, I will say that I would like to consider myself still a very novice kayaker. But throughout the course of the season, I've picked up on a few things that I'd like to share with you guys in hopes that it maybe helps you when you're making a decision to purchase a kayak or you've already got your kayak and you're just looking at different ways to uh, maximize your effort. So let's jump right in and get started with five things I wish I would have known when I purchased my first kayak. Number one, variable adjustment seating. My kayak, the uh, Ascend 12T, only has one seating position and it's low. I'm 6'3-ish and a fairly big guy, right? So sitting with my, my legs at a 90, are it becomes a little bit uncomfortable. Now I've had three and a half, four, four and a half hour sessions and the seating is comfortable enough to get me by, but I would absolutely love to be in an elevated position where I can get a better view of uh, kind of the surroundings, see maybe some submerged uh, objects, grass, whatever it may be. Plus it gives your back and your legs a little bit of a break. So when you're going out looking for a kayak, I would personally consider something with variable adjustment seating. Look for something with that higher position that you can you can get up and, and have just a little bit more comfort. You'll thank me in the long run, I promise. Number two, get yourself some type of anchoring system, whether it's an anchor trolley, whether it's power poles, whether it's spikes, whatever it is that you that you can find but you can afford or DIY, get yourself some type of anchoring system. You will thank me for that, I promise. Uh, here in Oklahoma, it's windy pretty much all the time. So occasionally I find a spot that's holding fish. I want to drop anchor and I don't want to spin in circles or don't want to be facing one particular direction depending on which way the wind's blowing. I went out and bought a $30 uh, anchor trolley system from I think it was Yak Attack or Yak Pack. I can't remember whichever one it is. I believe it's Yak Attack. Anyway, installed the, uh, the trolley system. I did have to screw some holes into my kayak, but I've got them sealed, so I'm not taking on any water. But if you're uncomfortable with that, you may want to consider a different alternative. <coughs> Excuse me. But with that trolley system, I can adjust the positioning of my anchor so that I'm facing whatever direction I really want based off the wind or my casting angle, wherever I want to feel comfortable, right? If I'm pitching a tree and want to to be able to cast to the left because I may feel like I have a little more control that way, then I can just adjust the trolley. Um, I'll post a link in the description for the particular anchor trolley that I purchased. Um, this is not a buyer's guide, guys. I'm not telling you that you need to go out and spend money. There are alternatives, a um, lot of DIY options. There is some associated cost, but I'm, I'm not backing a particular project. I'm telling you what I got, why I like it. Okay, number three, scupper plug management. And this one for me was extremely difficult to really wrap my head around, right? You're on, a, you're on a kayak, you're floating in the middle of the lake, and the idea of having six open holes in the bottom of your boat, it, like something just seems inherently wrong about that, right? Whether it's a psychological thing or you know, whatever the case may be, the idea of pulling six plugs from the bottom of my boat when I'm in the middle of the lake with all of my gear just seemed absurd to me. Uh, OWA and I went fishing during a little bit of a... Uh, a rainstorm that video is up on the channel you can go back and check that out if you want but at any rate I started taking on quite a bit of water um, OWA of course was laughing you know, just pull, pull your scuppers John I don't know what you're doing just pull your scuppers you'll thank me for it later finally I mentally convinced myself that it was going to be a, a, a wise decision pulled my scuppers and the water immediately drained out of the kayak now for me as a bigger guy it presents some challenges because depending on my weight distribution if I shift too much some water will come back up into the scuppers. Now it drains immediately back out, but it's a bit unnerving at times, again, when you're seeing open holes in the bottom of your kayak. So you just wanna make sure that you have your gear picked up, that they're not necessarily right next to a scupper plug. And you also wanna pay attention that if you're, you're tossing used baits or um, you decide to switch a bait, that when you, you toss it down in the floor of your kayak, that you're not throwing it in a scupper plug, or a scupper hole, rather. So scupper plug management, research that a lot of guys put ping pong balls in their scupper plugs and personally i want the flexibility of being able to pull that whenever i want without you know a lot of effort so if i'm in a position where i need to get some water out of the yak immediately i just want to be able to reach down and pull that out so that's number three scupper plug management number four this one uh, it was also really challenging for me simply because you have these preconceived ideas right and and number four is less is more uh, you you go watch a lot of these 
professional kayak anglers or even you know advanced kayak anglers and their boats are full of gear they'll they'll have multiple sets of rods their crate uh, the depth finder fish finder whatever it is they've got their tackle bag they've got additional boxes they've got all of this this gear on their boats and I tried to emulate that when I initially bought my yak and found that it created more frustration than benefit for me uh, those guys can get away with it. They do it well. There's a lot of really successful kayak anglers, professional kayak anglers, that do this fantastic. But if you're just getting into kayaking, take a minimal, minimalist approach, at least until you're a little more comfortable. Right now, I travel with no more than four rods on my kayak at any given time. I, I personally, me, don't see any value in having more than four rods. I've got some great utility in the, the rods that I have as far as gear ratio, length, you know, my, my different setups. But four rods, a kayak crate, an anchor, my tackle bag. That's pretty much it, guys. I, well, my PFD, sorry. I, I just don't go overboard, and I, I think part of that's driven from frustration for loading and unloading the kayak. After you've been out on the water for a long day, you don't want to spend the next two hours unloading your kayak, digging your gear out, getting everything squared away, putting your boat up, yada, 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 yada. So, if you're just getting into kayaking, take a less is more approach. Take out a couple of rods, test it. You'll find that you tend to gravitate more towards one particular rod anyway, versus um, you know throwing five six seven different applications whatever it may be again I'm sure there's a place for it tournament fishing requires you to have a wide variety of rods readily available but I still I think I could get by with four and I'll put that to the test in the spring so all right we're closing in on the list here I'm going to try to keep this video short I don't want to bore you to death but number five is do not trust waterproof compartments I don't care if you've bought the top of the line Rolls Royce of kayaks, I will never again trust what is advertised as a waterproof compartment. I, I won't, I just won't. I've lost a uh, charger or a charging bank, I've lost batteries for my GoPro, uh, my cell phone's been soaked, fortunately it's waterproof to a point. Um, my wallet's been soaked, I mean it's, I, I've been through a lot and this was all in water part, water tight compartments. Again, not a buyer's guide, but I would strongly suggest that you go out and you invest in some type of watertight bag or watertight box to put your, your valuables in. It, uh, I can't say that you will end up in the water, but I think it, it's similar to motorcycles, right? Guys say it's not a matter of if, but when. Um, I personally don't plan on going swimming. I may have just jinxed myself, but it's not really on my agenda of things to do in the kayak. But I still would suggest having a watertight bag or a waterproof bag, waterproof box. Put your valuables in it. It's better to be safe than sorry. Now, there's a couple of other items that I'd like to touch on, but we'll save that for another video. Those are the five things that I wish that I would have known when I initially purchased my kayak. So, do your research. Check online, guys. I mean, YouTube is an absolute wealth of knowledge when it comes to this type of stuff. I'm, I'm relatively new to kayaking. Uh, this will be my second full season when, when the spring rolls around. So I've still got a lot to learn too, but I just I hope that these five items save you some headaches in the future. Leave a note in the comments. Let me know what you guys think or, or maybe any tips or tricks that you guys do on your kayaks to improve your quality of life or keep things flowing in a way that, that makes sense for you. But let's have an open discussion. Make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. If you've made it this far in the video, I absolutely 100% appreciate every single one of you. We've got big things coming. We've got big things coming. Um, I'm working on producing some additional content. Fishing has been a little bit slow for me, so we're gonna have a little bit of a gear review and this type of stuff in the future. At any rate, again, if you've made it to this point in the video, I appreciate you. You guys are fantastic. We'll see you next time.